We are back on Morningline. Thanks for joining us talking about the issue of homelessness. As you see, as you see on the screen, two individuals that are with the uh, Metro Homeless Impact Division, Judy Tackett and Jessica Ivey, are here to uh, talk about it, take some calls. And we've got Bob next on the line who waited through the break. Good morning to you, Bob. Oh, good morning, uh, buddy uh, and, and the beautiful lady. I uh, hope you all are doing all right. But uh, I have only like like. Uh, two questions or okay. funding uh, the health these uh, programs uh, uh, you know they're getting ready to sue all these uh, co uh, drug companies for opioids and stuff like that which might be a part of the problem hmm. and uh, the other would how, how is the government shutdown affecting y'all's progress to help homes which I think is like uh, the illegals maybe 10 million all right, let's talk. Well, I don't know. You kind of mix those up, but let's let's go with this first point. We talked about mental illness being one of the main issues for some of the folks that are homeless. You know, certainly, I guess substance abuse is part of that equation as well. <laughs> I like his idea of going after the pharmaceuticals and making them help pay for some of the issues because these folks who get addicted, lose their jobs, end up on the streets. And actually, states and communities that have looked at the healthcare community mm -hmm. and how uh, to work with them have actually made more strides in getting different type of fundings. Oh, okay. And and really looking at the, it's a really good, that's what we need to do more in Nashville, I believe. Is to really what, look, is yes, look at? Yes, work with hospitals, work with health healthcare, uh, with insurance, with uh, whatever is out there and see, and learn from other cities how they, how they have created more support, fi funded through those funding sources, more support services, for people with mental illness and substance use. And I want to address this just so, because it's a controversial issue, the whole idea of folks who are undocumented or here illegally, um, and, and what part of the component they may be of the homelessness thing. And in, in my experience, I mean, uh, what I've seen is mostly Americans that are here legally, what, one way or the other. Uh, not that that matters. Anyone who's homeless should be helped, of course. But um, uh, would you say that uh, the uh, undocumented immigrants that are in this country make up much of the homeless population? To your knowledge, do you even see that? Do you ever differentiate that? I don't really see it that much. Mm -hmm. um, I think part of it is um, there's really a well-knit community. Mm -hmm. uh, we are trying to see with our partners, nonprofit and government agencies, um, where are uh, opportunities for support services if they if if, if they need. need it. I'm just saying I don't not. think that's a huge component of the mm -hmm. homelessness issue here. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's it runs the gamut across the board. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it, really. Children too. Yes. All right. So you guys got a grant in July. What's that for? How much money was it from HUD? Come on, how much, how much? Uh, 3.5 million Well, that's over some good years. cash right there for... The exciting thing, okay. it's really for uh, uh, unaccompanied youth and young adults. Oh, so it's, it's 24 adults. and under. All right. Oh, okay. Uh, and it's really looking at how can we build a comprehensive plan uh, and consolidated plan that moves us forward as a city to effectively all ending... Right, okay, I love hearing all that. Blah, 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 blah. You know, I, I want to know <laughs> how you're going to spend the money, tangibly. I want to hear about Heads' plan and computers and all. How will that money be spent? Leading to housing. Okay, meaning, are you going to buy some wood and nails and build <laughs> stuff with it? I mean, I want to know what that money is going to be spent on. I'm going to give it over to. Okay. To so Jessica some of the stuff one. that we're looking because at in spending that money is we're looking at two types of projects. One being diversion. So how do we really meet people where they're at that could potentially save their current housing okay. or currently okay. identify other areas in which they can go? So do they? Would have that be little loans or grants to them, or what? so there could be some financial assistance um, through like maybe food things okay. of that sort. And then there's also another component called rapid rehousing. And rapid rehousing is really looking at how do we rapidly rehouse someone? So how do we get someone into housing as quickly as possible with some financial assistance, so security deposit, oh, utility okay. to deposit, right. some rental assistance, mm -hmm. and then help them stabilize in those units so that they can stay there. So that's their unit, the lease is in their name. Mm -hmm. And then help them so that they're able to you know, get employment or income that will help them pay that rent on their own so when the assistance goes away, they don't just fall out of that housing. Makes perfect sense. And with young people, when you think about it, when we were that age, mm -hmm. we usually either had a roommate, yeah. we were in college, yeah. you know, in a dorm, or we had the parents. Yeah, I was gonna say, you had parents that helped. All three of those is so what I dealt with. This yeah. is really, how can we help yeah. Young Folks people. who don't have that. Yes, exactly. And you're right. Um, it's, it, whether you have homing, uh, housing and you lose it, or you're starting from ground zero, getting that housing initially is a big upfront mm -hmm. expense, yep. just like you said. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, first and last month's rent, maybe a security deposit, got to turn on the utilities. I mean, a few thousand bucks right off mm -hmm. the crack, depending on 
where you can find a place if it's affordable enough, right? All right, so, and that's again for 20, did you say? 24 and under. Okay, on great, a great. And so, I mean, some, some young, young individuals that maybe are ready to go out and make it on their own but need a helping hand. Yeah, mm -hmm. and this is a two-year grant. What I'm really excited about, it's a federal grant that will come back if we do a good job, uh, have our bed, and every year oh, we good. have the potential to bring 1.7 million in addition to what we get. To show what you're doing. So you'll have to show, hey, year. this is what we did yeah. with it, and, and they'll yep. say, great job, let's give you yep. some more. Mm -hmm. yep. Fantastic. And it's a great part partnership with, with 20 plus uh, partners at the table. Okay. Let's go to next to Dina, I believe. Hi, Dina. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Good morning, Dina. Dina. What's on your mind? Okay. So this is my st as a statement, then a suggestion. Um, I am bewildered by Americans in America as they tout certain uh, ideas like make America great again, or <coughs> we're the greatest country in the world, or we're the most richest country in the world. And locally, you know, this is music city, it's the it city, and everybody has to come here. Yet, we seem to just forget there are people right on our doorsteps who are homeless and need help. And we want to, like one man said on the phone earlier, push them to the side. Now, what I would suggest is that some of these rich country stars, <laughs> like uh, Keith Urban and uh, Big and Rich and others, that they would get together and maybe contribute a million dollars <laughs> each into a foundation that they could establish or even uh, partner with us an established foundation nonprofit to uh, eradicate homeless, I think that could be done in two years if they wanted to. But it is the fact that America in general, we have this soup, this sort of, um, we're, we're blissfully ignorant. You know, there's a saying um, about um, uh, ignorance is bliss. And I think that is true when it comes to Americans. We're all hyped up about uh, things that don't exist, superficial ideas like make America great again, when we can't not face the reality of the true problems in our own community and that slogans are not going to help. We have to look at what is actually being done and who's doing them and what is the, the, the integrity behind it and stop all of this foolishness because people are suffering. Look, 800,000 workers just yeah. were put out of their jobs. It's as simple as what you said, Nick. One check or two paychecks, you're on the street. That's all right. right. And, and she's right. We're talking about human beings here. I mean, it would be nice. And a lot of the country stars who live in this area do a lot of good charitable works. And it's very easy to say with someone else's money, well, you're rich, go ahead and say, and that's not really fair. But they do a lot of it. But I hear what she's saying just in terms of, you know, keeping your eye on the prize. And uh, it's really easy if you don't come downtown to be oblivious to the homelessness issue. I mean, I guess many of us will see some of these folks selling the contributor or other items on the streets and you make the connection there. But if you choose to ignore it, you can. Mm -hmm. You can. I'm really glad what Dina brought up. Yeah. It's really going to the accountability issue. Mm -hmm. It is going, we need to look at and examine what works, what doesn't work, how can we make it better? Where are the gaps? And, and to do that, we, I'm, I'm going back to, it's like uh, data will help us do that. Data mm -hmm. is not everything because mm -hmm. we need to pe help people, but we, ne we need to be efficient in how we help yeah, people. That's true, because you have limited resources. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Now that makes sense to me. That makes yeah. sense. Just to focus in on that and find out where the greatest need is, kind of triaging it mm -hmm. and deciding and then building from there. And the other thing she said I wanted to point mm -hmm. out, she really went right at the, the key issue. It's like ending homelessness. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about looking at homelessness, I said it before, as a housing status, that is about how do you end homelessness, you house people. And then yeah. you're, de but housing alone is not the answer. It also needs to be the supports and how, we, how, how do we do that in a sustainable manner. Yeah, the, the tough thing these days too, mm -hmm. to some degree, and Dina doesn't suffer from this, but there are too many people that lack empathy. <laughs> and, and again, the point is, so many folks, you know, you may say, well, I, I work hard, I'm not homeless, what the heck, they can help themselves. Well, you know, things can happen in your life that you have no control over, and then all of a sudden you end up on the streets. Uh, have some empathy and consider the fact that some people didn't have the same helping hand perhaps that you did. You There's know? an increase in, in seniors. So it's like... Senior citizens, who, yeah. Yes. Who's going back 
and and say okay here's the housing and now get a job when you're in your mid 50s you're not going to get your job or uh, your mid 60s you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. so that's hard mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and you know these days if folks even their property taxes can drive them out of some of the homes they were in for years and all of a sudden yep. their property values they can't afford on a fixed income to pay it but people like Dina have empathy let's go to uh, Pat hi Pat good morning Good morning. I'm calling um, about homelessness, and I'd like to just add to um, homelessness has a lot to do with mental illness, domestic violence. It all um, works together. Um, but I have seen so many people that have gone to get help, and they were they were turned away at the door because some some people don't want to deal with them because either their problem is, is too heavy for them or their crisis is just too um, something they can't deal with. Um, and then they'll pass them on from agency to agency to agency. A lot of people are not getting help because they don't have really have the programs uh, in place that they really need. Hmm. My, myself, I personally know that um, as, as an advocate for myself and others, um, you will call certain numbers or call a certain agencies, and they'll just give you to another agency. Mm -hmm. Nothing gets done. And if you don't have that, that push yourself and, and that godly spirit to go ahead and, and try and, and get a better life for yourself, nothing will, be, will, get, will get done. But another thing I want to say, too, instead of going to the big agencies, the money should be coming into the communities. That's where the people are. The people are not in, going to the executive building. Give the money to the churches. $3.5 million should be spent in the, in the urban areas or in the areas where the people are, where, where the people are living. You know, mm -hmm. that's what that money needs to be. Now, of course, they need to audit it. I understand that. Mm -hmm. But they need to go to where the people are. What do you think? One of the things that Pat brought up, and I'm going to give it over to okay. Jessica at one point, is um, <clears throat> we are not um, I'm, I'm mental illness and domestic violence. And then the other things you brought up is really where coordinated entry goes at the heart of it is we need to move from a system where um, if I am a person experiencing homelessness and come to you as a provider, uh, traditionally you would ask me, okay, you're not eligible for my program, mm -hmm. so here's a list to call. Okay. We need to get to a person-centered approach where it's like, okay, <coughs> let's see what your needs are and then get a warm handoff to where somebody can help you if it, that's not me. Okay. So, uh, right. Jessica, yeah, no, I agree. In. I'm glad yeah. you hit on that, how mm -hmm. you do that. Because, yeah, I mean, some organizations, you may not fit their criteria. And so then they refer you and they give you a list of numbers and you call another and sometimes you feel... Now, I was going to say, though, if you show up in the mission, they're not going to turn you away. It's just not yep. going to happen unless yep. you're there and not behaving following the rules. And there are certain rules that are good ones there, among other things. You can't bring drugs or drink into the place. But um, aside from that, but the phone calls where you're seeking out, I, I think I know what she's talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, we've gotten to a place where a coordinated entry is so well known across the city that most providers know that if they are talking to a person who's experiencing homelessness, that they can completely the simple intake mm -hmm. and know where to send them based off that okay, so that it's not good. just being passed around and that's the whole purpose of CES is not to be passed around but to be really streamlined in the approach um, the other thing she mentioned too was you know taking it back to the community with the 3.5 million dollars one of the biggest pieces of that is we have a youth action board and so we have young people under the age of 24 who have experienced homelessness or been a part of the system at some point in their life and their voice is a big part of what we do with that money yeah. so they have to essentially sign off on everything that we do <coughs> because they're the ones that have experienced it so it's f the money for them and so I just want to make sure that we also highlight that because they've been a huge part in the planning and figuring out with how we're going to spend that money. And they've been really awesome through the process. Okay, good. Let's go to Chris. Chris, good morning. Hi, Chris. Are you there, Chris? Yes, I am. Hello. <laughs> Hello, buddy. Go ahead, Chris. What's on your mind, my friend? Uh, yo, I can't believe I'm on you. Yeah. Hey, y'all might remember me as the captain on uh, Fort Nagley. Okay. And um, I had an idea, and I, I worked it out, and it was working real good. Okay, what's I that? Can't That's all right. Go ahead. You're doing great. Um, what's your idea? I just couldn't under I just couldn't understand. You know, and they got all this money, and I showed how to camp. I taught people how to camp, 
in the in people that had nothing. I helped people get off crack. I helped help them get off heroin. I I showed that a camping facility to start out with was a great idea. It could be done. It was beautiful. There's a documentary coming out about it, and it breaks my heart. And nobody. Nobody even thinks about this anymore. It's, you know what? When it's freezing cold out there. If I had a propane heater and a tent with a tarp over the top of it and, and a community around me and we were able to stay warm and we were able to, we had camaraderie and fellowship and there are people out there right now and you know what they need more than anything propane they need propane heaters no joke but they can camp they can live out there and why don't we take Greer Stadium tear it down and turn it into something beautiful that would really help people in the midst of their problems and teach them and, and learn them how to and let them work their way up I'm driving a dump truck now I've got a good job That's I'm in great. an apartment but I, I still remember what it was like. And camping was an option, and now it's not even an option. Okay. I mean, I remember in the, the Fort Negley and how they had to go in there and clear out the encampment. There are, and there are other tent cities in certain locations in the city. I've been through some of them, and it is a community to some degree. But maybe just talk about, you know, he, you know, his suggestion is that I think I hope he's saying that it's a transition and these people were at a hard time and he helped them and like himself now he's got a job and is in an apartment because I you know I can't go along with the idea of well let's just set up a bunch of tent cities where people are gonna live permanently there's a lot of reasons you can't just do that on public land I mean there's there's laws and rules and zoning but maybe as a transition what do you think of the tent cities um First of all, I think I know Chris, so yeah. I'm happy to hear you back. Yeah, and it's you're good doing to hear well. from him, and, he, he, and I, it's heartfelt from him. Yes, yes, it really and is. you can also. F and um, one of the things that I really think at the key of what Chris was saying is community. Yeah. Uh, the question for me becomes: How do we help people build community, and where? Um, I do personally not uh, believe in sanction camps. Uh, I think it does not, um, and, and I've stated this publicly and, and will fight mm -hmm. uh, sanction camps because it doesn't, it's about community building and helping people to, to build that community. Is that going to be beneficial to do it outdoors? People are still outdoors when it's then that cold. Mm -hmm. uh, people are still, I mean, uh, it, it just, it's not a solution. It's like we really, really, mm -hmm. and, and especially, yeah. uh, we need to really not create a subpopulation for people that happen not to have housing. It's like everybody deserves a home and housing and that community building and be part of a neighborhood and, and community. And and that's where the key is. And I, I hear Chris that I mean when I'm listening to him, that's what we need to get mm -hmm. better at. How do we help people find that community? Yeah, and end up where he is now. I think mm -hmm. he seems to have fond memories of some of how he helped and set up this little mm -hmm. community gathering, but and he's I, really I agree with what you just said. And I think maybe he would saying that maybe that's a transition for him, but that's not the ticket. And some people might get stuck in that cycle and just stay there, whereas he did get out and he's working and has an apartment. That's what I hope for everyone. Mm -hmm. you know, um, yes. Let's take a break on that note. When we come back, more of your phone calls right after this.